bad rubbish. I'm Jason. And I'm Jules. And we We doing doing Spokies. I'm drunk. (laughs) I am hammered. (laughs) I had two beers of that 99 bananas. I had one beer in the 99. (laughs) I I was slam banged. I'm quite confused on how I'm, uh, we still got two movies to do. (laughs) Yeah, I can barely think straight. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. What do you got? What? <laughs> well, what do you got for the beyond? This is a movie. Yeah. Originally, I chose this movie. Yeah, give them the backstory on this business. And then you were like, hey, I'm watching From Beyond. And I was like, oh, okay. The Beyond? And you were like, no, what? I watched it already. And I said, oh. You're like, I'm pretty sure it's from 1981. And I was like, well, certainly you mean the Jeffrey Combs movie from 1986. Yeah, no, it turned out that wasn't the case. So I said, well, fuck it. I'll watch that. I watched it as a child. We all know how that went. And so you're like, well, heck, I want to watch this dang gum movie. This one? I mean, I felt bad because... I'm getting rid of Red Knight. Deep Red. Deep Red and putting in The Beyond. Well, I thought it was real fucked up to be like, hey, I watched the wrong movie, so we're not going to watch the movie you picked. I didn't really care. I just picked it because it was, it was from the 1980s. I know. I felt like it was important for me to stand by your choice and watch this movie. Well, and it was... I liked it. Yeah. It is a wacky movie. You sure did. You hated it. And me for liking it. I got my pink slip. You don't like this movie? I hate it. Really? So much. It's so silly. I mean, like the tarantula scene really does go on for way too long. This is the, remember when I described the type of movie I hate? Movies with black people? Yes. <laughs> no, Thank God there were none in this. I don't remember you described. You, I, I know you like high uh, college movies with people in it. The young people young, uh, discovering yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. I don't like movies about the devil or about hell or about being trapped places and not being able to get out while there is like an evil presence keeping you there. Did the end of this movie remind you of anything? Jumanji? Star Wars? The end of the void. Remember that? Oh, where they're in that? Yeah, I guess. They're in the void? Yeah. I like the void much more than this. This definitely seemed like uh, an inspiration for the void at the end there i almost think it doesn't even matter that we didn't watch deep red because watching a fulci movie made me remember that i hate these like italian shit horror movies that i find wildly boring and are just like check it out where gross it's weird because it is actually filmed in louisiana mama now the gator got in the house now the gator why what there are some american actors in it but. well i found that really confusing because i assume they shot in italy where everything's dirt cheap what, they don't have swamps in italy D- what about behind lucas house? or plant what did you see everybody knows about behind lucas house well, he's got swamps uh this movie had a budget uh estimated of four hundred thousand dollars how much four hundred dollars is the budget <laughs> is that what he said? yeah times a hundred thousand four hundred thousand dollars yeah in 1981 yep the year i was born I was born in 82. You're so old, it makes me sick. I think this was actually released in March as well. It it grossed $123,000. That's not good. The tagline for this movie, Through the Gates of Hell They Came From the Beyond. I love it. Grindhouse releasing? Yeah, he, he relaunched it back in the 90s. Is that the official American release? Yep. Thank you, Quentin Tarantino. He likes it. He champions well, it. Well, so Bob- Ro- Rolling Thunder, isn't that the name of the- It's not Grindhouse. Well, no. Bob Mora- Morowski of Grindhouse Releasing, who restored this film in 1998, uh, he's an, a film editor, and he used a shot of the spider uh, bite dream sequence uh, in Spider-Man 2002. This is the second part of Lucio Fulci's Gates Death of Hell trilogy. The Gates of Hell trilogy. City of the Living Dead was the first one in 1980. This one, and then The House by the Cemetery, also in 81. This film was never seen in America in its uncut form until 1998, when Grindhouse releasing tracked down the original master and restored the film, playing it at midnight shows at selected cities. How come I say Rolling Thunder and you say Grindhouse? Because that's who did it. Quentin Tarantino's Rolling Thunder's Pictures released the restored DVD, uh, as it was his favorite horror film when initially released in 1993. When originally released in 1993? You said it didn't come out until 90. Okay. Larry Ray, who plays the window cleaner, yeah. <laughs> I like how he just becomes a fountain of blood when he hits the ground. He was the 
head of the Louisiana Film Commission at the time, which is why he was probably like, hey, put me in this movie or your movie won't get made. <laughs> uh, synopses? Liza Merrill. Oh, you're reading it? I don't know. Yeah, go for it. I hate this movie. Liza Merrill. Catriona. I, I wish you would because these names are going to trip me up. Uh, Catriona McCall inherited a broken hotel in Louisiana and with it, the kooky housekeeper Martha, Veronica Lazar, and Martha's dimwit son Arthur, Giampaolo Sarcarola. After discovering that a man named Schweik, Antoine St. John, died in the hotel, Fuqua? as told by a local blind gossip monger, Emily Fisher, Chinjia Moriel, Chinjia. <laughs> Liza teams up with local doctor, an all-around cool guy, Dr. John McCabe, David Warbeck, to avenge the death of Joe the Plumber, Giovanni Di Nava, and also close the gates of hell before being sucked into the beyond. I'll tell you, a few things have made me angrier than watching him constantly shoot the zombies once, twice in the stomach. <laughs> What's wrong with him? And then be like, okay, shoot the head. Okay, shooting in the head stops them completely. I'm going to go back to the stomach. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's... Let's keep trying it. It's silly, for one, because he shoots them in in the torso. <laughs> 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 I thought there was a spider and then there was a shape moving. He does originally shoot them in the midsection. Yeah. And then in the head. And then he goes, oh, click, click, oh, I'm out of bullets. Oh, no. What do yeah. I do? He had more bullets. I'm going to go into this room. Oh, I have more bullets. I'll just keep shooting them again. Do you know what I would have saved those bullets to uh, kill her and then myself? Well, the funny part is, is you probably didn't notice this. But after she goes down to the morgue, but then comes back up in the elevator and he gets in it. <laughs> He's reloading his gun. He, I don't know what's going on here. If he's just having a fun little bit here. He flips open the barrel so he can put the bullets in. But as the door is closing, he's behind the door. You can see he turns the gun around and he's starting to put a bullet down the barrel of the gun. Oh, yeah. That's how you do it. And then in the split second before the door closes, you can see her. She looks at him, sees what he does, and starts smiling right before the door closes. Do you think it's like a joke between them or he's stupid? Either he's so stupid and she's not, <laughs> or at this point, yeah, he's just like doop to do and she sees that and has a good laugh and they keep it in the movie. So the movie starts in like 1930? 1923, I think. 1930? 1927. And some guys are on a boat with torches. And there's a guy in a hotel painting. Real Frankenstein shit. We got to go burn the monster. And then as soon as the boats get ashore, cars pull up and other guys with torches come out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need lots. And so they go into the hotel and Spike is painting. Well, wait, do you, how about the black guy that's like. Oh, at the front desk? Yeah, I'm a little worried about him, but they just go right past him. He like, like literally makes eye contact with every person walking past him he looks real scared and sweaty everybody's real sweaty but he's has he's non plus as far as people barging in in an angry mob and murdering the only person staying there i bet they gotta kill that warlock upstairs at the same time liza is reading a book that keeps bandying about the air nigon or something Ilardo? Lagringinguini? Il- Iliarda. <laughs> mein Kampf? It's hard to say. So they burst into his room and they, and they go and they start whipping him with a chain. Yeah, they pull it away and he opens up and is bleeding. Well, he they hit him in the face with a chain and it just shreds his skin off. Yeah. He's bleeding. I don't, hit, think, I don't think that happens. No, you'd be busted. But you're just not going to like latch onto your skin and rip it off and they and they hit him in his groin and eventually they tie him up they chain him up or no i'm sorry they nail him up to the wall in the basement they know how to go down to the basement and there's a inscription on the wall that suggests this is one of the gates of hell he says i am the one keeping you safe do not do this or what are you doing this to me and they start throwing like molten white stuff on him acid really hot soap I don't know. And he's just melting. Yeah, fucking... It's super gross. Oh, boy. I don't like these gore movies, dude. I wasn't expecting... I mean, I should have, but I wasn't expecting this. It just seems like uh, a good excuse to make a movie to do the effects. Yeah, absolutely. That's right? the whole fucking movie. Yeah. And he's just melting, and I guess they just brick up that part of the hotel. I guess. Jump forward to, like, 1981. And the main lady, she's inherited the hotel. 
the year of the Matrix. Yeah. She inherited the hotel from her rich uncle, and it came with Martha and Stuart, who are the sexy maid and the dimwit bellhop. Now, is Stuart her son? Yes. She is kind of the sexy lady. There's, Isn't she, though? It's latent, but bubbling under the surface. It's specific when Joe the Plumber shows up, and it's like, oh my God, are they going to fuck right here? Because we don't know who she is. All of a sudden, Joe the Plumber shows up. A painter? He, did, did the painter guy already fall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Miss Blonde Hair, we'll be done painting by this. And all because of her eyes? That's what made him fall? He sees a milky eyed lady in the window. I mean, the milky-eyed lady. Well, it's A at this point, because we don't know who she is. But she was the girl in the beginning of the movie, right? But we don't know why she's milky. Okay. And has a seeing eye dog. Apparently, the state recognizes her milky eyes. Rusty? Yeah. What's his name? Probably. No, it's he's it's like, oh, it's Dickie. I think the dog's name is Dickie. (laughs) Yeah, maybe. I think it is. And so he's all busted up, and they're like, call the doctor. He's a fountain of fucking blood when he hits the ground. He's not that high up. He falls on the grass, and it's just like... Once they get him on the couches, he's like lacerated in the face and shit. It's crazy. And the, and they're like, the doctor's coming. The doctor's coming. And, and the doctor comes and he goes, he needs water. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, well, I ain't got none of that. We got to get him to the hospital. Why the hell didn't we just take him to the hospital in the fucking first place? But yeah. They, back then, they certainly didn't know, hey, we shouldn't move somebody who might have a back or neck injury. Joe the plumber shows up. He's got a Jesus saves the world license plate he looks like he's ready to fuck he's like a porno guy he is a very much a porno yeah. guy i love it because it's english dub but the majority of the people are definitely speaking italian well this is great because i watched the italian version where it's all subtitles i just rented it on amazon i was watching it and i was like this is really weird they're all speaking italian but it's clearly sp- that they're supposed to be american the dub is hilarious because nobody's doing a louisiana accent and they're just trying to get the words in the mouth during its movement period, but not even trying to like at least try to match maybe the lip syncing. Do they slip in like crawdad and gumbo? Too much, to be honest. Oh. In the high, the God, the good Nevo, the crawdad. Hey, mama, that ghetto man back. Come here. Oh. Oh. Get him, mama. Oh. Get that ghetto. Ah. Ghetto over there. So he goes down there, and all of a sudden, this is when Martha presents herself. She just Wait. rushes up on them. I know. It's like, oh, is she, is she bad? Who the fuck is this lady? Oh, my God. She goes, uh, I'm bad. Mm, 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 mm. Me and Joe have this sexual chemistry. I laid some planks out for Joe to get over there. I made this path just for him. So he's like, hmm, chopping on a cigar. And then all of a sudden he gets up to a wall and there's water pouring out of it. So he takes it upon himself to just break the wall down. Yeah, gotta figure out where the water's coming from. (laughs) And he goes, oh, there's more planks back here. How the fuck did Martha get these planks behind a hidden brick wall? But whatever. And he starts walking over and he goes, oh shit, there's a guy crucified down here. I'm gonna get really close to him with my face. Oh no, there's a hole in the wall. It's melting. Yeah, that was another, like, look at artifact. The water is making the bricks fall away. It's like Papier Marche. Marche? Machi. German. A hand reaches out and grabs him in his face and just starts crushing it. Pushes his eyeball out. My God, the amount of eyeball things. In this <laughs> this is when Callie said, nope, I'm out. We're eating. I'm eating a calazone over here. This mostly did not, like, gross me out, but I knew it would frighten me as a child. It made me giggle. <laughs> this entire movie made me laugh. Because it's... I mean, hell, yeah, at the time, shit. This probably would have made people throw up in the aisles. I mean, I think this is Fulci's whole jam is like gore, gore stuff. This was the scene at the time. I don't know if that's you know? true, but. Yeah, big time. Okay. Planet big. Terror. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> From the 70s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Planet Terror. Dance, bitch! It just crushes his face, but uh, we don't find him till later. The doctor is at the morgue with Dr. Larry, who's got a brain machine. Hey, we found this corpse uh, over at the Seven Door Hotel or whatever. And how were they like, it's only six years old, but it's well preserved? How are they like, he stayed in room 36? You're telling me there's 35 other rooms in this two-story house? Great question. So Larry hooks up the brain ometer to Spike's corpse brain, oatmeal face, and oh shit, nothing's happening. I'm going to leave the room. There's already three other corpses in there under plastic. Yeah, a lot of dead bodies in Louisiana. And as soon as he leaves the room, it starts beeping. Brainwave. 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 And then they find Joe the plumber's dead body, and they bring that to the morgue. His wife shows up to dress him, which seems like something the mortician might do. 
And he's perfectly quaffed. But she also brought her weird red-haired child with her. Yeah, who's in the hallway. And then the wife looks at something that we aren't privy to and gets freaked out. Because <laughs> the brainometer isn't going off at this point. No corpses are moving. Isn't it? Doesn't she just look over at the other weird dead body? I think she. Well, yeah, but the weird mossy fucked up falls, dead bodies. And I, I like how they're not skeletons; they just have like that weird fuzzy shit on them. Acid falls on her face. Yeah, is that what she that is? Embalming acid. She hits her. Yeah, why would there be acid in the embalming lab? It's a huge fucking vial of it. Melts her face. She's knocked out, doesn't wake up as the acid melts her face, and her daughter just stares and does not save her. I wrote down the daughter's name. It's Jill, but the actress's name is Maria Pia Marsala, which I thought was a really cool name. She comes in because the mom's screaming, and she looks at her mother laying on the floor as this vat of acid is turning her into fucking Two-Face. And she's just standing there, all verklempt. Oh, what do I do? And then all of a sudden, just a, a, a sea-length shore of foamy brain gut water starts. What we did is we got some baking soda and some vinegar and some red food coloring. And- you ever seen a hush puppy slush puppy? Why wouldn't she just like run around it? She's too scared. I thought she got eaten when she opens that cooler up and it's another no, dead body. Yeah, no, so the wa- the water's moving towards her. She could easily run out the door. She came in, but she instead runs the other way. Let me try to get into one of these dead body freezers to be safe. I think the bodies start moving a little bit, maybe. And yeah, she opens up a door and a, a beard, dead ice cave looking ice man, he falls on her. That we're led to believe, but we don't see that. So then the blind lady... Almost gets ran over by the main lady, which she's driving down the middle of a road on a bridge. And she goes, oh, take me to my house. And she goes, okay. And they go to her house. She starts playing a little fucking November rain. And she goes, yeah, you know, boy, spooky stuff. But it's not clear what. So then she runs into the doctor and he goes, hey, toots, what are you doing? Hot nipples? And she goes, oh, I'm just, you know, driving down the street. And he goes, yeah, uh, mm." You're talking about a blind lady that lives in a house? That's not true. That house is empty. What? Something. Arthur, uh, Martha dies. She's unclogging a bathtub. Oh, my God. Yeah, what? she's like, hey, this bathtub's full of black water. I better get it out of there. Yeah, let me put my hands in the tub and pull away whatever's there. A big clump of hair. And then the water goes down and it reveals Joe the plumber? I don't think Or that's just a guy. A guy. Another oatmeal head. Now, her back is to the door. Yeah. He's rising slowly out of the bathtub. She could have gotten out All of a sudden, she starts turning. And he's turning with her, and now he's in front of the door. Man, as soon as I saw that nail. Because she saw, uh, the main lady saw Schweik crucified in the room, and the doctor says, you're full of shit, you dumb idiot. What is it, your time of the month? I'm a doctor. And now the spikes are still in the wall, by the way. The nails. Jesus walks into a hotel, and he gives the innkeeper three nails, and he says, Can you put me up for the night? Look what you've done to my sheets. And Spike, or whoever this dead guy is now, just jams Martha's head against oh, the wall. Oh, you think that's that guy? I don't know who But that is. guy's like the protector. Well, yeah, I know. I assume he was one of the, Okay. There's seven corpses for hell. So we get another eye popping <laughs> out of the head. I really, I really want to show this effect. Is it three times? Do we get three eyeballs? There's this uh, eyeball situation with the spiders. Arthur's murdered also at some point. Who's Arthur? Her son. Oh, yeah. When does he die? I don't know. He's horny for In the water lady. at the end? He wants, right. he wants to fuck the lady that has the hotel, right? Oh, everybody does. Yeah. He's like being real sweaty and weird in her he's bedroom at one point. He's always sweating, yeah. The, there's a guy who wants to fix up the house for no fee, but she doesn't <laughs> want him to do it. Who is that guy? He's like Lair- uh, uh, he's like a, I don't know, a remodeler, but he also is a surveyor maybe. But he goes and looks for the blueprints for the house. And he cannot believe his eyes. I think this is the point where the subtitles disappear for me. Well, even without them, I don't think it really makes any sense. Apparently, maybe the house is bigger than it should be. Well, it's. I think it's the extra space in the basement where the secret gate of hell. Everything's X'd out. And he looks at it and he goes, And then? It falls off a ladder. Well, no, there's an exploding crash. But according to the Wikipedia page, an unseen force shoves him off the ladder. Okay. He falls on the ground and and spurts blood, I believe. What do you think is wrong with him when he hits the ground? He bashes his head against the floor. Breaks his neck, apparently, according to the Wikipedia article. But none of that really matters because here comes marching one real tarantula. (laughs) 
and three fake tarantulas. <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> this scene those, those fake spiders are so amazingly stupid well and, and we didn't touch on this but the score is utter bananas yeah it's sort of funk disco it's out of place regardless of what genre it is yeah and the spiders take about 45 fucking minutes to reach him <laughs> And then another 45 minutes to climb up him. And then they just slowly start biting his face. Yep. Uh, close up on his, his lip. His as lip. spider pierces it and blood starts pouring. Ah, and it just clenches the shit out of him. Oh, it. my God. This is back when people didn't realize tarantulas weren't violent or dangerous. Yeah, they don't want anything to do with you. They walk funny. They do. They are, they're they like testing out what's going on. Yeah. Is this safe? Yeah. That's why they're hairy. They're just feeling it. And they're getting into his eyeballs and really doing a number on him this is awful it's so stupid it's is he alive yeah his eyes are open he's horrified his neck is broken he's, he's not alive. screaming because his neck is broken he's paralyzed yeah. so he he's dead i guess they pull out his tongue maybe but the weird part is is that pans up to the book that's on the floor yeah and it in three consecutive shots the house disappears yep but he erases it from the blueprint <laughs> at first i'm like oh it cut off the part that he was looking at interesting yeah. oh oh it's cutting off more oh all, all, oh, all of it's gone now the house doesn't exist <sighs> Apparently, so the doctor, he finds, he goes into the blind lady's house. Now, her front door is green, and it has like those slats instead of a, a window or a screen. He pries it open. With uh, shears? Yeah. Big old chopper, chopper scissors. And then it cuts to him inside, and the, house, and the front door is not the door he just broke open. Of course not. It's just a regular door. But then this is... It's her house, but it's not her house. Nobody lives well, there. Well, it is, but it's abandoned. But we see her in her house, and it's not abandoned. And she's like 100 years old? She should be. She's not, though. And he finds the book. She's kind of hot, except for those creepy eyes. The egg cream book. Yeah. With those eyes, hey, between you and me, would those eyes turn you off? I got to feel like those were extremely painful. The contacts? Yeah. In 1981? Yeah, I'm sure. Because they developed them for another film that we were watching that I commented on contacts of that nature this probably was not anywhere near that level of production value no it's like they just did you say know. it was four, 400 bucks <laughs> <laughs> 495 oh but he finds the book and he starts reading it oh dear lord the gates of hell mm, interesting mm -hmm. and then he goes to find the woman because she has a vision the, mare of some sort the woman the main character yeah okay Something happens and she's spooked. She's uh, what is it? She is this when she sees Schweiger up there, or does she see mm, stuff in the basement? That does happen. Maybe this is that. And the doctor, even though he just read this book, he's just like, "You're a dumb woman." Well, I don't have subtitles, so I don't know what's happening at this point. He doesn't believe do, her I, at all. It's nighttime and it's upsetting and raining, and she's running around. And then he opens the door and it's daytime. Get a hold of yourself. He shakes her. I mean, that's what you have to do, right? I guess. Shake him. But he just read the book and it's explained everything. And then he was in the morgue and on one of the corpse's oatmeal arms, he sees the print of the devil on from the book. But then he goes to see her and he's just like, you're full of shit. I'm like, well, you, you just saw these things. You're doing research. What? Why aren't you all of a sudden believing her? And eventually what they come to determine is that there's seven doors to hell. And once that opens up, everybody will be zombies. Everybody? Yeah. Oh. And they go down into the basement and she goes, oh, she goes, uh, Arthur tried to kill me down here. Yeah. Right over there. Right there where there's no Arthur. Yeah. It was really weird. I don't believe you. And then white light, a rush of air. <laughs> whoa. They're like, whoa, we're in the matrix. And they run out. And now they're in hell. No, what? You skipped yeah. the whole hospital sequence. No, because they, from the house, they're driving to the hospital. And she goes, this is very bizarre. Nobody's outside. He goes, yeah, that is Oh, you're weird. okay, I got you. And then they get to the hospital. And it's empty except for mental patients and zombies. Yeah, mental patients that feel like they're straight out of Hellraiser or, or, or the void. Why the fuck did we not watch Hellraiser, man? Because you didn't want to. Why did we pick garbage movies? My movies are great. And this movie's fine, too. I mean, I did pick worse movies than you. I'm quite disappointed. I like this for reasons that probably, you know, are personal, but... I hate it. 
I'm really digging it. It's so stupid. And the great part is this movie's short, yeah. but right around the 45 minute mark, I thought I was closer to the end. And I saw that I was 45 minutes in and had about 40 minutes to go. And I was so upset. I had that same feeling for another movie. Yeah. But so now, yeah, we're brains. And the, the, the doctor, it's funny because he goes, I need facts. I need rational facts to believe. And then he opens up his doctor desk drawer and there's a fucking revolver in it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, that's concrete facts, but... So maybe they're not in hell because that guy's there? The other guy? So, th- yeah. So then... Mm, is everybody just in shooting. hell? The whole world is hell now. They grab her head, her hair through the window, and he's just like, fuck it. And that's when he learns, shoot him in the brain. Yes. But then moments later, he's shooting them in their stomach. Squibs are flying everywhere. I hate it. It's like, if you're that bad of a shot, just, you know, admit it. If you were in the zombie apocalypse with mental patients and zombies and gates of hell, would you kill yourself? I'd keep one bullet. Yeah, so you could when there's no hope left. So I could shoot my peener. Oh, so they can't make more use? Mm-hmm. All right, good idea. And she, he goes, get into the elevator. And she gets into the elevator and he goes, oh shit, I'm cut off because I'm out of bullets. And she goes down because the elevator just goes right to the morgue. That's all it does. Because ghosts do that? Their office... The morgue. But then it also goes up to the ground floor at one point? That too, but only at that one point. (laughs) So he's like, shit, I'm out of bullets and there's zombies everywhere. I'm going to go into this room. And then a big cleaver comes flying out of this uh, partitioned room divider. That other guy with the mustache, he was cut in half by some glass at some point or what? Not in half. So Larry presents himself. Dr. McGavin, what the hell's going on here? And he goes, oh shit, Larry. And so the doctor is still just shooting guys in the stomach and the tits. We, we've we already established. Bullet to the brain shuts them down. They, Whether it's, no, they fall very slowly, but they do fall. Mental patients or the undead. Or infants. Can you call them mental patients? <laughs> mm, yeah. Crazies? Yes. Okay. Vegetables. But all of a sudden, they look at a door and, and it gets really bright and explodes. And the glass flies into Larry's head and kills him. And he, oh, he's, he's dead? They really linger on that, too. And then McGavin goes, oh, shit. I'm, I have an endless amount of bullets, though, suddenly. And he just starts. <laughs> You're going for a long time there, buddy. And then the elevator opens. Because the lady, she finds Jill in the morgue. Yeah, why is Jill back in the morgue? She's already She's been... at the funeral. Right, but then she got golden eyes? Yeah, at the funeral. But why would she go back to the morgue? I don't know. But she's down there, and she's got her eyes closed. And oh, Jill, come with me. Look at that dog. And they go back upstairs, and they get the, the doctor, and this is when he does the weird, weird bullet thing, and she loses her shit. And they go back downstairs, and... You know, corpses are everywhere, and all of a sudden, Jill starts strangling the main lady. Yeah. He turns around. Blows her. Without missing a beat, he... Blows her fucking head in. Her face. The whole thing explodes. Boom! Poor Jill. Oh, (laughs) She had to go. (laughs) And I thought, oh, maybe she's a vessel. Uh, No. What? She turns? She becomes bad? I thought the golden eyes meant you were good no well no because the lady read the book and it golden eyed her and we see her and jill gets golden eyed at the funeral at her house that may or may not really exist and you yeah we forgot to talk about her and being. those go- ghosts show up scooby-doo's 13 ghosts and she goes no i don't want to go leave me alone don't take me with you and her, she goes attack them dicky Save me. And the dog's like, oh, okay. And he jumps up on him and starts biting on him. I got her, bitch. And then the, and then the, the, the ghosts disappear. And the dog comes up. And he looks like he's been brain. Okay, this dog. And he, and he saves her, I guess. But he also looks like he's covered in brains and maybe his brain is open. What? Why? Did, did the zombies do anything to him? I don't know. So she goes, oh, Dickie, you're my favorite. And he goes, you think so? Now I'm a rubber puppet. Rah! And he just starts biting her throat. Give me that fucking throat. And he just tears it out of her. <laughs> that was very sexual. Dicky. And then he goes, oh, you know what else? That's biting her ear. Mm, give me that. Let me your ear. And he rips off her ear. 
I don't think he's going to give it back, so it's not a lending. And then he pees on her face. <laughs> yep. Where's that peanut butter you always put on your pussy? <laughs> and then her face melts because his urine is acid, and we yeah. got to get a lot of face meltings in. So there, uh, the the doctor and the lady run out of the room and go into a dark door yep. and down some stairs. Oh man, we're in the basement. Why didn't we go at the front door of the hospital? We went through this other door, and now we're back in the basement, yep. miles away. How did this happen? I don't know. Let's run down this way. Yeah. Because there's a light, and they go through the light, and now they're in the painting. There's dead bodies strewn about everywhere, and they hear hell, a voiceover. Hell is on earth. What, hey, hey, hey. What are those voices? Are those voices just saying their names? Yeah. Dr. Elliot McCabe. Liza. Is that what they're really saying? I they call know. him Dr. Elliot <laughs> McCabe? That's what- Resident of 240 Long Street. <laughs> so they're in hell. Yeah. They can't get out. Oh, and they turn around. Oh, no, the door is closed behind us. Oh, man, everything looks exactly the same everywhere. And then they run a little bit more. And then their eyes turn gold. Yeah, they go, oh, this. And then they disappear. They do. And the movie sucks. And the, Yeah. Fuck. I thought it was silly. I thought it was f- enjoyable. In like a real hipster way. I didn't care about the story. I didn't care about the characters. It was so fucking boring. And I don't like gore like that. Like you can shock me with some gore at like a surprising moment. I'm like, whoa, that was awesome. But when it's just like you said, basically the whole movie structure around. It's like Mission Impossible. Instead of being action, awesome action set pieces. It's like, yeah, the fucking face melts here. We got to figure out how we get to the face melting. The problem with the gore is that it just makes me go, I wonder how they did that. And then I sit and think how they did it. Really? Mm -hmm. You sat and thought about that? Mm -hmm. Like, it seems like maybe baking soda. What would that eat through? Correct. What would they do with that? How know? about when they had that guy's like chest open? Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, uh, clearly you just put a little bit of fake skin over his actual chest. <laughs> and I suspect that there is actual chest hair in that opening. <laughs> well, everybody uh, knows hearts are hairy. That's true. So, yeah, that's where I came from. I, the music really wasn't suited for this. And then I just sitting there thinking like, oh, I wonder what, is, what do they do for that? I could care less about what's going on, you know. It's who cares. But okay. uh, the effects were entertaining. I feel like every time we try to do horror movies, we both come away from it going, "Well, I, I actually don't think I like horror movies that much. We should not do this next year." <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do it next year. Yeah, we will. I can you give me a rating for this movie? Um, I give it a five. Yeah. Yeah. It's silly. There's a lot of dubbing, and the effects are interesting. What do you give it? I don't even know if I should be allowed to rate it because, I mean, I hate it. On like, on like a personal level, it was like probably a, a three. You would much rather watch Monument Avenue than this? I don't know. I feel bad. Like, say I give it a three. Like, personally, that was my experience watching it. I feel like other people, I, I understand that they could get stuff out of this. It does not work on me. Everything about it rubs me the wrong way. I <laughs> well, fucking hey, hate it. No worries about that, man. Three. Dope. So we spooked. We spooked. We're so, uh, did it give you a spooky feeling? It did. Yeah, I like all that. It's <laughs> like the barometer. Now. It really did give you a spooky no, feeling? No, absolutely not. <laughs> it made me giggle quite often. It's the kind of movie that I watch where I'm like, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was surprised that uh, Callie didn't want to watch it and rib it with me, but... Anyways, you can find us on Instagram, Reddit, YouTube, Facebook. We doing filmographies, X slash Twitters, do filmographies. Email us at we doing filmographies at gmail.com. We got a hotline. 763-634-1897. Tell us about how I am an asshole for not liking the beyond by... Farchikarchiku. Is it Luca Falchi? What's his fucking name? It's... Uh, fuck. I forget his Luca name. Luca Brazzi? Now playing network.net. Yeah, go ahead and check out other cool podcasts on yep. now, now playing network.net. Music, movies, great dogs. podcasts. We are there too. They got dogs. Mm-hmm. If you go to that website, a dog comes out of your monitor and you have to pet it. If you don't bite pet your it, throat. If you don't pet it, it's like the ring. Seven days later it comes back and your jaw falls off. Yeah. Go ahead and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. If you do that, you can go ahead and pick out a movie and we'll review it for you on this as an episode that's pretty cool how about that mm-hmm. i guess that's it right you got something you got something you got mm. a spooky you got a spooky thought no we'll no. see you tomorrow with another spooky right yeah the last two or the first three who knows <laughs> yeah. snip it off it doesn't work bye <laughs>